Hey, this is Cody Starr here. I'm here with my name twin, Cody Canada. Yeah. Cody Canada Department of formerly Ragweed 2. Yes, sir. Um, so we're at Mile Zero Fest, uh, and I'm able to get Cody fresh out of the shower. Yes. After playing all week. Yeah, my um, first day off. Yeah. So I needed it. Yeah, so I'm coming bug you. Cleansing. No, it's all good. <laughs> so, uh, most important question. So how are the pipes holding up? Pipes are good. Yeah? Yeah, I got I got a head of it. I, uh, it was all sinus related, mm -hmm. but I think I'm probably like every other human male. I'm afraid to go to the, doc the doctor. Uh, I'm afraid to say something's deathly wrong. And I was afraid that I was going to get in there and I had some serious throat issues. So I put it off about two years. And then once I got in there, he said that uh, three things, uh, lifestyle. Uh, you quit smoking, right? I had to, uh, which, you know, you know, my kids don't really, my kids didn't know that I did. It was just a nervous, <clears throat> nervous tick. You know, I never, but I, I would find myself late at night. I never would smoke on my own. It was always like in a group of folks. And right. It's a nervous habit. Right. And, and he told me, so that's not really the problem, but okay. it's not going to, it's not going to help. It's okay. all sinus. But it's like, you know, I'll just, I'm just going to cool it off. So, within a week, I got my voice back, like a week. So they put you on antibiotics and stuff, right? Still on, yeah. Yeah. But I got them all back. Well, um, we saw, so one of the first shows you did at the festival was uh, you did a set with McClure at that uh, little theater. Mm -hmm. And, like, when you first came on, you could feel the difference. Like, you, you sounded 10 years younger. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been getting yeah. it a lot. Yeah, you got into 17, you're, and something happened, and then you got it back. I got but, fatigued. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Is it mostly an endurance thing? You think when you when you're losing it? When I start losing, it's endurance. It, it yeah. really is. I mean, I can I can hit the notes, which I couldn't a month ago. But I just I'm pushing myself too hard. I get tired. Right. But I mean, that's another thing that vocal coach said. Which I have vocal coach. I've never had one in my life. She said that eventually you'll get it back. Just exercising. Okay. I mean, I got lazy. I mean, I started over, I started compensating for not having a voice. So I was doing low songs, uh -huh. less windy songs. Yep. And that's not really my repertoire is kind of long winded. And I've talked to other guys and they say when you're sick, you know, you tend to just, the, the, the solution is to scream louder, which is probably the worst thing you can do for your voice. Worst but, thing. But, you know, that's, I guess when you, the show must go on type thing. Yeah. You guys, you know, macho up and then. Yeah. Yeah, macho, macho enough for the birds. Because yeah. I was overcompensating for two years and just making it worse. And then when it would, when I couldn't get the note, I would scream off mic, mm -hmm. thinking that I need to clear something up. Mm -hmm. and I was doing just making those, we'll just do this, and just boiling them. This is good, man, because you can, I mean, now that you're educated about it, you're, this is a long haul thing. This is what, yeah. you don't plan to do anything else. I don't have so. anything else I can do. <laughs> so it it's is. good you know how to take care of it. So you got a big uh, 2017 as well, you and your family. So what? Hit a bunch of different things. So, Dirks and Willie are both starting to make. They've been making appearances, you know, even back uh, when you cut that acoustic record down. Um, down the pole. Yeah, four day. Now four day, but uh, Dirks is pretty much a regular thing. Both of them are. Yeah, Willie's. <clears throat> Willie's coming into it. Right. You know, he's. He's younger. He's still nine. You know? Yeah, yeah. You know, I remember slightly pushing Dirks when he was seven or eight, and then I thought, you know, if I push these kids too hard, they're gonna. So I just let him, I just let it go and let him do, do their own thing. And, and Willie's just now realizing what it's like to, it sounds so stupid, but like be player one. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, they, yeah. they played video games forever. And Dirks has moved upstairs to play guitar. So now Willie's playing Mario. He's Mario instead of Luigi. And so he's like, let him be a kid. And then right. he'll, move, he'll move into yeah. to his own music. And he is. He's slow, slowly getting there. Yeah. And Dirks, you know, he's full on. Yeah. Learning songs left and right. And he is. When I listened to him jam the other day upstairs, and really, he's, I'm not, I, he, he's a lot further than I thought. You know, he was just beating on drums. Yeah, you, uh, uh, I saw you at a Christmas show with Mac um, back at Fort Worth, and you know you were lamenting the fact that he was getting to play with Ray Wiley at Green Hall, and, yeah. and you were like 22 or 23 or something like that when you first played, and he's 12. Yeah, I think I was 23 years old. I played. Yeah, I had to earn it. 
yeah, and he's there now. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of him. You know, and he, they're both sweet kids and uh, troublemakers. And last night, well, he looks he, like though he's got uh, like at the at the acoustic gig, he had the bandana stuff. He was like a couple piercings and uh, braid and jewelry shot being Keith Richards. Though. Like, he kind of. <laughs> Had that thing going on. <laughs> well, last night he uh, he goes, Daddy, let's get to play guitar. I don't get to do anything. He's like, well, we only got an hour, you know, and you, know, you don't, you're not really playing anything, but just drums. And then Dirtz came on stage. He goes, Hey, can we just do a Tom Petty song? So really, like, like watching out for each other. That's so that's awesome. awesome. My crazy theory is that I mean, play this family, mm-hmm. right? That there's going to be a Canada Super Band someday. There will be. Yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> because Brock, uh, Wade's youngest boy, he, you know, we're all related as their cousins. I married uh, Shannon mm-hmm. and uh, Wade's wife, or sister. So, right, Shelby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's a, you know, I mean, we're, we do everything together. You know, and Jeremy, he was married to the other sister for a bit. Right. So we have kids all over the office, and right. they're all jamming, and they're all signed up for School of Rock. So yeah, it's mm-hmm. gonna, it's gonna happen. Great transition. So you guys are getting to, to the uh, School of Rock business. Yeah, about it. we've been trying for two years, three years. We try to get it, and just for one thing, I I want to say this without trying to sound like an asshole. Um, there's just certain places I don't want to play, mm-hmm. and but there's certain places I have to play because we got a lot of mouths to feed, you know. But right. I just want to do something else, so I don't have to go to. Sorry, I don't have to go to El Paso. I don't have right. to go to to Midland. Right. You know, it's like there's. I'm just, I'm 41, and I don't want to put blood buckets and knife and blood buckets anymore. Right. And I really feel like that I've kind of earned the right to be able to pick and choose where I want to play. But I haven't. <laughs> you know, so, like, let's open the school up so I can be home. And we can teach kids, and I don't have to play these shitty places. Well, the other thing is, is you know, if you, so if you can build that up, build that business up, like fewer shows, rest your voice, yeah. do the marathon thing versus, yeah. you know, going full throttle and burning yourself out. You yeah. Know, or, you know, running the pipes. Yeah. And, you know, just watching all these kids, you know, it really started with the, the theater stuff that we did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you yeah. do it with uh, Bowen's kids, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. yeah, the Christian Youth Theater. We did mm-hmm. that for a bit. And then, of course, right when Willie became of, of age, mm-hmm. Darks discovered the music. So now, Willie didn't, he's not doing theater anymore. But that's where it started, was like watching all these talented kids and Hearing these kids sing, and then Wade and I do our Christmas show, and then we started bringing the kids up to sing during the Christmas show. And he's like, holy shit, there's a bunch of really talented kids in this town. And then we went to New York for a Pearl Jam concert, and went to see School of Rock on Broadway. And we're just blown away. And that's when we said, you know, let's, all these kids are singing and acting and everything, and we could do this. Mm-hmm. So we reached out to School of Rock, and they, I guess didn't think that their problems was big enough and not musical enough. And, you know, just like, That's funny. Cool. Everybody up there. <laughs> yeah, well, once we started kind of, you know, informing them that you know, George Strait's band's here and Randy Rogers is here and well, everybody's here. Right. So then they they realized that we got the green light. All that is good. So they sprayed the foam yesterday between the walls and we're going to paint it next Friday. So we're ready to go. All right, let's get to the new album. So I learned a couple things while we were here that it's going to be called. Three? Three, yeah. Because it's three years after uh, Hippie Love Punk, right? Hippie Love Punk. Yeah. Three-piece band. Three piece, yeah, you went three-piece. That was another thing that happened in 2017 yeah. that I was going to mention. But, uh, yeah. It's so. the best thing I've done. You know, it, I've had everybody tell me to do it. But I don't like to be told what to do, you know. And I always wanted piano in a band, and I hired two piano players, and it just didn't work. Right. I mean, it just, I thought it would be awesome. And they're great players. And they're fun to, to jam with, but it just didn't mix. And everybody was saying, "No, just write, just sing your songs and play guitar like you always done." And, and it seemed to, it, it's working. And you know, we don't have to go through a practice with a guy that doesn't know the old songs. Because Waldo, our drummer, he I've known him for 26 years, 25, okay. 25 years. And Jeremy and I've been doing it for 25. Years. Right. So it's just easy. You know, I was like, Waldo is like, remember this song from 2005? Yeah, yeah, I remember which record, you know, and just jump into it. So it's just easier, you know, and just keeping it simple, 
not overcrowded. You know, when I first started with the part of, you know, the five piece band, that's too much. I right. learned that. And right, then, you, you'd sit in there and you, uh, who was playing keys for you? Um, no, it was uh, Steve Littleton. Littleton, thank you. It was a big name. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but he, I don't know, it just didn't, it just wasn't working, you know, and, and Jeremy and I have been doing this for so long together, you know, and we, we have that brother harmony. Right. And we just know how each other play. And it's just, it just, when you sit back and look at it, we're the band. Right. You know, so we don't need to add anybody else. Yeah. You know, so, and we're both happy with it. Yeah. You know, we, me and Jeremy still enjoy playing together. That's good. You know, and, yeah, I was wondering, like, you know, how, how you still feel about it, doing it for all these years, so 25 still, years now. Still love it. You know, I mean, there was... Those two years of being discouraged because I couldn't sing, you know, I had to cut the set list down to like a certain few songs. But right. now, once we got a, our thumb on what the problem was, I mean, now it's it's seriously, I don't want to sound cheesy, but it's I got a whole new lease. I feel like, shit, I'm good. I got to call the book and agent, like, send me out for four weeks. Let's go to New York City and tour down. Yeah, yeah. So we're just enjoying it again. You know? Great. The, um, so, we, so in addition to three, it's out on 420. Mm hmm. Um, you played a couple songs. I was making notes here. Uh, Blackbird. Yeah. And 1800 Miles from Your Heart. Yep. Were two of them that we heard. Um, so did you write all of them by yourself on this, or did you do some co-writes? Or 1800 is me. Um, that was the pressure of 13 songs on the record. I don't like number 13, so I need one more. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, Blackbird was an old song of mine that I never really liked, but I liked the riff. Okay. So I took it to McClure, and I about three quarters of it written, and he helped me. What he always does, you know, he helped me kind of mold it. Mm -hmm. Like, Mike's real good at, I'll take him something that I'm proud of, mm -hmm. but he just kind of like, just molds it, shapes it around. You know? And he always says, I don't need co-writes, but he does. I mean, you know, even if there's one slight little idea that's maybe two words in the rhyme, he, that's helping me. So that one is a co-write, um, I, think, I think there's three on there that's co-writes. McClure and I wrote one called Lipstick. Uh, our second, as he, as he so eloquently put it, our second prostitute song. <laughs> <laughs> First, I'm trying to think. New York City Girl. Okay. Long time ago. Okay. So, <clears throat> that one, and uh, I think that's it. I think that's all he wrote, the rest of me. We did a Haggard song. He produced it, and y'all did the boot. Did y'all do the boot hatch? No, 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 we did. No, we did some pre-writing. Okay. Uh, we did a the zone, Rip and Springs. Oh, okay. Like Robert Earl does his stuff. And okay. Rick does his stuff. Just tucked away in the hill country. And nobody can knock on the door. That's what I like. I like privacy. Yeah. We yeah. did the whole party. You know, throw the party, let everybody show up in the studio. Anymore. No, no. Um, shut the door, no booze. You gotta smoke all the weed you want. No guests, we're just sitting in the recording and writing. Down in business? Yeah. And Jamie Lamb was a big part of this record. I've known her for a long time, but never really worked with her. But she, uh, She's everywhere at this festival, man. I she mentioned is, that last everywhere. night. She, I mean, she'll play her own gig, and she'll somehow get to three others simultaneously and play, and she yeah. played with. You last night, and then she played with Turnpike last night, and then I mean, and then she, she is the darling right now. I mean, yeah. she's top female artist. Well, she team. needs it. Yeah. You know, she deserves it. She yeah. wants her butt off. You know, and three kids, and, mm -hmm. and just drives around in her car and goes to gig to gig. I called her one night and said, "Are you in Oklahoma City?" Yeah. I, said, I guess my dad's seventieth birthday. Would you mind stopping by my dad's house? And, oh man. So she met us at my dad's and came over and sang like. Captain Mateo songs for my dad. But she was hard to old, man. And uh, 1800 Miles was a song that I, I knew that I had to have her do this on it. Great harmony. She's in on that one. It's a song called Song About Nothing that um, I wasn't I wasn't really sold on. And uh, You told me about that when I talked to you at the some place in Fort Worth, it was a couple years ago. Was it? Happy Armadillo or something Armadillo or whatever. And oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you were, we were talking about then about you were kind of in this writing drought. You hadn't been writing now. And, yeah. And you had mentioned that song. Yeah. You, I think you played that song. I probably did. It's, yeah, it's yeah. been. I've had it for longer than I think. Wade put me up to it. 
Okay. Write a song about nothing. Like, that sounds boring. And he said, man, just, <clears throat> he said, just do what our heroes did. Just look around the room and just start mad. So I did. But I took it to Jamie and I said, I, I just don't, I don't, I'm not buying it. And she said, you put a 12 string guitar in it. And some harmonies and stuff like a Tom Petty song. And that's all, that, all I needed. And I said, all right, well, then you're coming to the studio and you're singing all of She got roped into more work. <laughs> yes, she did. But there's that one and uh, Dirk split on the song with me. I haven't finished the lyrics yet. It's called Paranoid. Uh, he challenged me to a punk song. He said, you've never written a punk song. Ever. I've written a lot of punk songs. You just weren't around then? Yeah, you just weren't <laughs> born yet. I was a punk. And um, so I wrote that one and he played guitar on it. That's really where it kind of took off. You know? I didn't know that he was that in advance. And I walked by the living room and he was playing that song. Oh, I was like, dude. Is that, is that the new song? Yeah. Like, pack your bag, we're going to the studio right now. So we went to the studio and he cut it and I paid him 200 bucks. And... <laughs> okay. no, his eyes got about that big. Like, $200? Oh, really? But he put it on. Uh, he put it in a bank. <laughs> that was mommy. <laughs> uh huh. But he's saving for a Gibson Explorer. Uh, he wants to be James Hetfield so bad. That's pretty hey, good. Yeah. Or to me. Is, yeah. He just wanted to be Justin Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. The, uh, you, you're known for telling your stories at your gigs, and I know you say you get sick. You tell them every night, and everybody gets sick of them, but nobody gets sick of them, actually. I think it's me getting sick of them. Yeah, well, you, you tell them, and I've, I've heard most of them, I think, but uh, you ever thought about collecting them and put them in a, in a memoir or something like that? Because like, that'd be a good read. Yeah. Uh, our good friend Robin always says that to me. Oh, Pro yeah. Probably one day. Yeah. I'll probably... You have a couple more uh, more chapters to write? Yeah, i got a couple more decades I want get out of the way before I start doing that. I'll, I'll write a memoir book and put it next to my uh, hot sauce in H-E-B. <laughs> <laughs> Canadian hot sauce. <laughs> yeah. Sorry yeah. it's so hot. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> well, cool. Anything else you want to tell me about the album? Because we're looking forward to hearing it. And like I said, we've got mm -hmm. a little peek of it here and there. But uh... You know, uh, when we first put it together, I was... I was I was taking my time because we, you know, we had to do a record a year for like with Universal South. Mm -hmm. We had to have a record out every year. What you talking about Ragweed Days? Yeah, and right. there was just a nerve wreck. Because I can't, I'm not one of those guys that writes 40 songs and picks 10. Mm -hmm. and I'm the guy that writes 10 songs mm -hmm. and then scrambles to write three or four more. Mm -hmm. for the record. So I, we let our piano player go. <clears throat> he got drunk one night and started talking shit to me on a text, you know, because that's really grown up. It's like yelling from a moving car. And he uh, told me to write a song, and I couldn't write, blah, 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 just being ugly. And I just called shit, and it's like, book studio, I don't give a shit. If I have nothing, it's, I'm not going to let him talk to me like that. That's that stubborn uh, side of you, like saying nothing. Watch this. this. Yeah. <laughs> so I got in there and realized I had like 11 songs. I didn't realize. I didn't know I had that. So we hopped in there and <clears throat> started piecing them together. And then I realized this is really a good collection of songs. Like Hippie Love Puck, I liked it. <clears throat> Excuse me. But there was like three that I, I rushed. I should have just, I should have let them sit in the studio for a minute before and then come back to them. And then you find stuff for minutes like that quite yeah. regularly? Yeah. Yeah, you can't rush it. And I've, I've, every record I've ever done, I've rushed it. Adventus that we did with Seth, mm -hmm. there was like three songs in there. It's like, man, those are so fast. Like, we, we were so excited to do them. Like, we just wrote it, we ran into the studio and did it, and we did it like five clicks too fast. Because mm -hmm. you know, we were excited. You know, right, if we right. just lay back and let it groove, right. then it been a different song. And then to me, it ruins it. Like, the song's done. Too. Like, all I hear is that. That version, like you, it's just burned. That's it's it. just done. Like so we did Seth's uh, "Prayer for the Lonely," and it was too fast. And then I didn't like to play it. No offense to Seth or the song. It's just, right. it's just all I could hear was our mistake. And then I went to see Seth play live and slow it down. Damn it! Well, that's his style because he's blues and gospel done. stuff. Yeah. And I mean, that's yeah. what we should have done was like really laid back. Uh -huh. Let the song. Speak. Yeah, because it's a solemn song, mm -hmm. but you know it's got this upbeat and the keys are real heavy in it. And, yeah. yeah, it needs to be laid back. But 
with this one, I sit and looked at the songs when we were done. You know, we recorded them in Jan or June, and then come back to the studio to the same. So then I could really put my hair around. So I like it. It's my favorite thing we've done. Well, it's my favorite thing we've done in this band. But it's my favorite record since the Mission California. That was a really personal record to me. And this one kind of feels the same way. There's no, there's no sad songs on this. It's all uh, life lessons. Yeah, you seem to be in a really good place, like emotionally. You've, you've always been really transparent online, mm -hmm. you know, and just tell us what you feel. And if somebody's being an asshole at a show or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, you, you go on there and say, oh, be nasty or whatever. Um, hell, I've heard Carney Man twice, probably <laughs> because you've been with McClure both times. <laughs> and then we heard boys from, boys from Oklahoma last night. So, mm -hmm. like, and those were things like you had sworn off that you would never, ever play yeah. again. And it's because I was just angry. Right, right. And I was so mad at I was mad that Ragweed broke up. I didn't want it to break up, but it did. Right. You know, we had just we just had a, a ship that was sinking from the inside. You know, I mean, somebody asked me last night about it, but man, it was like six, the success of things made certain people in the band just mad and greedy, mm -hmm. and then it started sinking, and I didn't know what to do, so I was mad. Right. And I was pissed off for like four years. Well, so I was uh, like, I'm not singing this song. I'm not doing that song. Yeah. And then Waldo joined the band, and I said, hey, we might be a boy from Oklahoma. Is that okay? And he said, well, yeah. Well, what's wrong with making everybody happy? Right. And then I realized that he was the perfect fit. Because <laughs> he's like, he's our, our happy dude. You know? There's no, we cut out all of the... It also keeps you grounded, right? Like, if you, you're feeling pissy or whatever, yeah. whatever I mean, and he's... It's always good to have positive people around you. Right? Yeah. yeah. You know, and Roger Klein told me, don't get jaded, and I got jaded. And then Todd Snyder told me, can get jaded? And I was asking him about beer run. Can you get tired of that? He's like, man, people want to sing it back to me. Hell no. And then I kind of realized, well, shit. It's just 10 minutes, 5, 10 minutes of a goofy song about weed. And it makes people smile, so fuck it. All right, let's do it. Well, it's just one of those things, I, and I understood the perspective you were coming from. You were saying, look, I don't want to be the, the weed man guy. Like, yeah. that, that I didn't, you didn't want to be personified and identified with that song by itself. It, your catalog is so rich, yeah. you know. Um, There's always going to be those songs. Yeah. And I will continue to write songs about the, the subject matter. Right. But I also, I wanted to be remembered as a guy that could actually write songs. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Instead of just, I didn't want to be the, the guy gimmick. That, yeah, yeah. I want to be a gimmick. You know, write a song yeah. about, I mean, how many songs can you hear about back roads of beer drinking? It's the same thing. We write songs about an illegal smile. You know, I mean, you can write this. You want to write this so many times before you're pigeonholed. But I think I got out of it. I think. I mean, what's weird is that as an outsider to watch it happen, and you know, a couple times over the years, I've kind of seen you here and there, and just watch the the transformation. Because I remember you, I'm like, he's not happy right now, or uh, just I think to me the thing that blew my mind was, you know, while Ragweed was maybe falling apart on the inside, you know, on the outside, everybody was like, hell yeah, like, still in love with the band and stuff, mm -hmm. and then you had to, you basically had to start over, you're playing yeah. these, you know, giant places, lots of people, or whatever, start over from scratch, you and Plato, yeah. and, and, you know, the guys that you pulled in. And I was and bitter then, about that, too. Yeah, exactly, and you're like, you, know, you work your ass off yeah, for all like these years, and then you work start through. over, but that's involved, right? Works, so, I mean, yeah, work 16 years to reach a certain level, and a level that was a little higher than I wanted to reach. Because I, I didn't want to, that was another thing, you know, Grady and Randy wanted to do, like, Miranda Lambert tours. It's like, okay. I don't want to do that. I mean, once you... Start having kids then, right? By yeah, that time, yeah, right? yeah, we started having, like, 2005, we started having kids. But I, I just didn't want to, I didn't want to do those. Like, we did the, the Dirt Bentley thing, mm -hmm. but it wasn't huge. You know, we were doing House of Blues, and stubs and stuff like that. You know, we weren't doing, now Durst is doing you know, 30,000 seaters. But I didn't want to do that because it just doesn't, I don't think that the message gets across after a certain amount of people feel really, you know. I don't think. I mean, unless you're some giant band. But it's just a lot of work and being that big of a band. But those guys wanted to do the Nashville thing and I didn't want to do it. And so we worked that hard and then the brakes were slammed on. Right, and it was a shocker. I remember hearing it on the radio, and then like 
I know you were trying to take y'all were you were trying to take the high road on that and saying like we're not I'm not taking the band name with me because yeah. it's all fucking shit. <laughs> 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 Looking back. Oxus. It's so good because you read all this stuff and and you're you're trying to say the right things yeah. and you know something's going on underneath there. Yeah. But, but I didn't want, I didn't want the band to be tarnished. Right. But then I started getting blamed for everything. And then one day I called Kelly Dearborn there in Dallas and yep. said, dude. We've been hanging with him quite a bit. <laughs> we've got to talk about this because I'm sinking. Because people are coming to my shows, people are talking shit to me online, saying that I broke the band up and my wife is stealing money and blah, blah, blah. And I have got to set the record straight. And I did. And Grady Randy called me and like, how dare you? I was like, man, I want you. I mean, I'm the one out here working. You know, and I'm, I'm suffocating. And people need to know. Right. Because if you People don't like lies. Right. You start lying to people, then you lose your crowd. Right. And no offense, but you guys aren't playing music now. And Jeremy right. and I are, and they need to know the truth so we can move on. So we can continue to have the fan base that we had. And once we were honest with everybody, I was like, oh, okay, well, cool. Thanks for being honest. Right. When's the next record coming out? Right. So it was, just honesty is, you have to be honest with everybody all the time. Yeah. Right. Well, why wouldn't you be? You know, it was it was bitter and it was lonely and it was but now everybody's happy and songs are flowing and everybody around us is happy. McClure's in a good spot, that that's another mm-hmm. thing. Because Mike was you know, that that whole breakup of that band it, it really affected Mike too, you know. Because I mean he was a big part, he was there for our first year. But not for our last year, you know, because we were mad at each other for some stupid ass reason. But it is everybody finally Shook it off and it took eight years. <laughs> I find it takes a lot more energy to be pissed off all the time than it is just to let it go. It's tiring. And, yeah. It yeah. just eats you up. Yeah. And now we all sleep at night. I mean, I had, I had a couple of years I couldn't sleep because I was worried about it. Worried about what somebody was saying about this and worried that this song, I would overthink a song. And what if somebody finds out what this song's about? What if somebody doesn't get what this song's about? And then one day I just said, we're worried about it. You know, she, my wife, she's always, you know, we're 20 years deep. And she, the other day she said, it's always been compliments. Whether it was writing the songs or singing them. She goes, I can tell when your voice is going out. It's not really 100% your throat. It's, you're freaking out. Mm-hmm. And you worry about it and you can't deliver. Because when you don't give a shit, it's when you do your best. So she said, don't, you know, stop. So give a shit. But it, you know, like I used to do. <laughs> Awesome. But it's fun. It's fun again, man. I'm glad to get all the voice things figured out. Get a band that's happy. I don't know. We did a lot for in this scene, not through this scene. We did a lot in this scene. I, didn't, I don't want to be away from it. You know? yeah. I enjoyed my friends and peers. Watching Turnpike. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun last night. Aaron Evans said it. Well, they got, a, they got a kid up there on the stage too last yeah. night and trying to sing. So, yeah. uh, you know, you're not the only one putting kids to work around here. <laughs> the old Muzzy Braun, you know. Uh huh. Reckless and Vicky's dad. Uh huh. First time I brought the boys on stage to sing, he went, "How dare you exploit your children like that?" <laughs> <laughs> Free labor, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. I, uh, you know, we're in. We're enjoying it here at Mile Zero. I appreciate you uh, talking to us. Yeah, you know, thank you. Getting all these questions. Great stuff. Thank so, you, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate you all enjoy the rest of your trip.